The Duke of Edinburgh has taught me responsibility. The Duke of Edinburgh really helped me with my anxiety. It just pushes you to carry on going even when you don't feel you really want to. DOV provides a good opportunity for young people like me to open up and be more confident. He makes might not want to do that Duke of Edinburgh, but I'm telling you, it's something to do because it got, it'll be there with you for life. Our school is in Salford. It is one of the most deprived areas in the UK. Connaught School for Girls is a very multicultural, diverse school in East London, Leytonstone. I think the Duke of Edinburgh can offer so many young people so many things, such as they can develop new skills, obviously. They get to try out new opportunities. They get to step out of their comfort zone. I feel like they get to discover a bit of themselves, which they may not have realised were there before. I enjoy seeing the scenery, because living in the city, you don't really see any, any trees, any green. The Department for Education funding has been a real game changer in order for us to be able to do the Duke of Edinburgh Award. I know for sure in the past if an opportunity is coming up but it's cost quite a lot of money, I've had to turn it down. When I heard about this, I was like, oh my goodness, this is great. I feel like me and so many other people have been more swayed to take it on. So for skill, I do floristry. I feel like it's preparing me for the world of work in the future because it gives me a real insight into how people open their businesses and how they start off by nothing and then they go and make something so big. I'm making crisp packet blankets for homeless people. I feel like I'm being useful, helping other people. For me, the volunteering is like the best part of it. I feel like DOV should be offered in like schools everywhere because everyone deserves equal opportunity. What I love most about running the DV is working with the young people involved, watching them blossom and evolve into these very confident, very skilled, very articulate young people. The Duke of Edinburgh Award really is for everybody. My message to any teacher that would like to be running the DOV is just do it. Good evening ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this Conservative Home Reception in partnership with the Duke of Edinburgh Awards, uh, celebrating the fantastic work that the award scheme does right across the UK. My name is Angus Passadwa, I'm the Chief Executive of Conservative Home and it's a pleasure to see so many of you here this evening. Um, I am going to ask a, a quick request though, I appreciate some of you might still have social distancing in the brain from a few years ago, but if you could all just take a step forward, it feels like you're all very far away. I know the wine is a temptation at the back there, but it's not going anywhere so don't worry. But Thank you. Uh, do come further forward. Um, this is the, the second year now running that we've, we've done this event uh, in partnership with Duke of Edinburgh uh, and worked together on this. And I have to say, um, we have done 40 events this year, Conservative Home at Party Conference. And this is genuinely one of my favourite events that we do. And not just because it's the last one at the end of, the, of a very busy <laughs> few days, um, but because we, and certainly I personally, passionately believe in the work the Duke of Edinburgh's award do. Um, as a gold award holder myself, I don't like to brag about too much, um, but as a gold award holder myself, I got to see firsthand uh, that amazing work and what that whole scheme can really do for, for young people, both myself and, and for, for my peers at school. Um, and I think uh, there's, there's a, couple of a couple of things that, that people think of uh, when they think about the Duke of Edinburgh's award. Um, firstly, is probably a lot of um, muddy hills and, and rain and tents and, and, and things like that. Um, and, and certainly the, the tents and the rain are here with us in Manchester, um, but thankfully not too many muddy hills. Um, the, the other thing is, is probably, and I think this is probably one of the, the, the greatest misconceptions, is the idea that this is somehow something that people at posh public schools do, right? And I think you saw in the video there, uh, and hopefully many of you are aware that Duke of Edinburgh's award is for everyone, okay? And people, no matter what their background, no matter where they are, can do this award 
and, and take part in the scheme. And the, the theme that Duke of Edinburgh's award have running through the party conference season this year is all around enrichment and how we empower young people. Uh, and I think this is a, a really key thing uh, to be doing. And so we're here tonight to, to celebrate that. Um, so I will move on very quickly because I appreciate you're not here to hear from me. We are delighted to be joined by the Secretary of State this evening and we'll, we'll come along to, to hear from her uh, very shortly. But before we do, I'm very pleased to introduce the Vice Chairman of the Conservative Party for Youth, uh, Sarah Brickliffe, MP. Thank you. I need to move the mic down. A lot shorter than people expect. <laughs> Um, thank you very much, and it's a pleasure to be here tonight. As the Member of Parliament for Hyburn and the youngest Conservative MP, it's a privilege to speak to you today about a programme, the Duke of Edinburgh Award, which is part of, of a wider topic close to my heart, namely getting young people active and engaged in society. It's not that long ago that I went through the DOV. It's quite a while ago, actually. Uh, and I can speak about its impact in engaging young people. It wasn't just about learning a new skill or embarking on adventurous expeditions, but it was about understanding the value of collaboration, leadership, and resilience. When I was growing up, Hyman and Haslinden was quite a deprived place, and sometimes my peers had quite limited opportunities. So the DV really provided an outlet for them. And I never found the DV Awards a mere accolade to add to one's CV. It's a testament to a young person's determination, adaptability, and their commitment to the community. And in today's rapidly evolving world, these are not just qualities, these are necessities. I was looking at a fairly recent survey by the United Learning Trust prior to this event. Major employers across the UK have highlighted the attributes they value most in candidates. Leadership, teamwork, self-motivation, and communication amongst others. And 76% emphasize the importance of life skills development, with a significant portion acknowledging that programs like the DOV could make a positive difference during recruitment. It is those skills like leadership, teamwork, self-motivation, and communication that an individual may not be lucky enough to pick up through school. I know from my experience that the DOV teaches them. I also know from my time as a member of parliament the role that grassroots sports and activity plays in developing those skills too. Just like last week, and I appreciate it, I appreciate this slightly off topic, but relevant nonetheless. I was at a martial arts group in my constituency, and it was amazing to see the level of respect and resilience the young people obtained from taking part. So the DOV Award and a host of other community schemes and activities are not just about preparing our youth for employment. It's equipping them for life. It's teaching them to navigate challenges, to lead with empathy, and to always, always strive for personal growth. I know that the government have provided extra investment in recent years to allow the expansion of the DOV award in the most deprived areas. That is something I support. We have to show young people from difficult backgrounds that there's a route for them and empower them with skills like being confident communicators and working in unfamiliar situations with others. And I just want to say this as well. If we can give young people from more deprived areas a better start in life, and I'm confident that the DOV Award contributes to that, then we need to back it. But what schemes like this also achieve for a community is massive in terms of creating good citizens and reducing corrosive effects of antisocial behavior, which can sometimes lead young people into a vicious cycle of misdemeanors. I'm very grateful for being invited here tonight to speak to you all. I'm very grateful for all of the young people that contribute to our society that have been involved in DOV projects. I really do believe that it helps young people create a, a, a positive future for themselves. And I would encourage everybody in this room when they go away to make sure that they are, are encouraging 
their young people to get involved in schemes like these. So I thank you very much, and it's great to be with you all tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sarah. Um, like Sarah, my own experience with the Duke of Edinburgh was probably a little bit longer ago than I'd like to remember or, or admit publicly. Um, but we are very fortunate to be joined uh, this evening by Zach Mir. Zach is a youth ambassador for Duke of Edinburgh's ward. Uh, and please give him a very warm welcome as he talks us through some of his experiences of the scheme. Thank you. Um, hi everyone, before I start my speech I just want to say what a privilege it is to be speaking in front of such an influential mix of people and um, I've had the privilege to speak to some of you too. Um, my name is Zach and I'm delighted to be speaking to you all this evening about my, my journey through the Duke of Edinburgh Awards and I'm sure most of you have heard of the award and I'm sure most of you have taken part in it as well. Um, and th you know the award has been such a cornerstone of my personal growth and I just want to share this journey of transforming, challenging and rewarding. Let's rewind the clock back to year nine. I'm age 13, and like most of other teenagers, I lack a sense of direction or any self-confidence. And I first heard about the DV, and it was pretty exciting and quite scary, because I didn't really know what it was. This was clearly an opportunity, but also a huge leap out of my comfort zone. And it meant having to find a new hobby and staying away from home for once, which I wasn't good at. Growing up in Luton, I was used to the hustle and bustle of like city life, and liked the idea of escaping and experiencing the benefits of the outdoors. I knew the DV expedition would give me that experience to get outside, enjoy nature, and try something completely new. But before I could do that, there were the physical skills and volunteering sections I had to complete. For those of you who have not done the DV, there are three award levels, bronze, silver, and gold. Bronze and silver have four sections, physical skills, volunteering, and the expedition. And at gold, there is the additional section of the residential. To achieve your gold, it takes over a year. So it's real commitment and requires dedication and time management, but also an opportunity to make a positive, lasting difference on yourself and your community. For my bronze physical section, I delved into the world of boxing, something I had never tried before. And this was really an endeavor that demanded physical strength, personal endurance, but also mental strength. Through the weekly training sessions at my local community centre, I learned that per to persevere in the face of adversity and gaining a newfound sense of discipline that has been invaluable in all aspects of my life. It is a sport I have continued with to this day and has taught me the valuable lesson that you don't have to be the best at something to enjoy it. For the skills section, I joined the RAF cadets, an amazing experience. This section honed my discipline, making sure my uniform was always neat and my beret was folded correctly. The leadership and communication skills I also learned were a memorable experience. Here, I also had my first taste of map reading, which really came in handy for the expedition. The volunteering section was also a completely new experience to me and opened so many doors and has led me to being a founding ambassador for a local charity. Throughout my bronze, silver, and whilst pursuing for my gold, I have delivered talks in high schools, spoken on radio shows, spoken at conferences, and also delivered a range of workshops, focusing on empowering disadvantaged young people from Lucerne to improve their mental and physical well-being and improve their employability skills and job prospects. It has helped me shape me into the person I am today, and it is so incredibly rewarding helping other young people discover what they are truly capable of. DV opened my eyes into volunteering and set me on this journey. Now the expedition. It wasn't what I had initially pictured when I first signed up. My school traveled to the Peak District and spent several days in teams, navigating by foot through rugged terrain, camping under the stars, and telling stories by a campfire. And I know it sounds like a story, but there was so much rain and hailstorm. <laughs> our tents leaked, our clothes were soaked in toilets as well. There weren't any, so there's no point talking about that. Now, I appreciate I may not really be selling this as an experience, but being able to connect with the natural world, take in the mountain views, and overcome obstacles as a team taught me the true value of teamwork and endurance, and it's an experience I'll never forget. I'm now reading law at university, hoping to become a barrister. I'm also a proud DV bronze and silver, and also pursuing my gold. As a DUV UK Youth Ambassador, I want to ensure every young person is given this opportunity. 
Your DOV award is your own personal experience, and you shape it the way you want to. You can get outdoors, take time away from the pressures of social media, and mix with a range of different people and discover new passions. I passionately believe that if every young person had access to this award, then the mental health crisis that my generation is currently facing at the moment would be drastically improved. Thank you all for, li for listening, and uh, look, have, enjoy the rest of your conference. Zach, thank you so much. And uh, I'm sure everyone here will join me in wishing you the very best as you continue towards your gold award. And I, I really hope you, you, get, you get there and, and, and achieve. Um, our, our next speaker, I'm very delighted to be joined by Ruth Marble, the Chief Executive of uh, Duke of Edinburgh Award. Uh, thank you for joining us again this year. Thank you for partnering with us again this year. Um, please welcome Ruth. Thank you so much, Angus. Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming. This is very much intended to be a celebration of everything that uh, sort of DOV does and is. Um, we are passionate about giving young people opportunities uh, like the ones that Zach has described. And um, I think this is possibly the best job in the world, uh, except for the fact that I'm continuously upstaged by young people. Uh, <laughs> but um, I know how much sort of guts it takes to stand up in front of a big room of people. So. Uh, can we just give Zach one more round of applause? Because that's a really good... um, I think Zach has sort of shared, and, and some of the, the sort of stories in the video have just illustrate really powerfully why giving young people opportunities to explore who they are, to develop their independence, their resilience, uh, and to kind of learn just what they're capable of um, are so important. Um, here at, uh, at DAV, we are passionate about extending these kinds of opportunities to all young people. Um, all young people need support to develop that confidence um, and the essential skills that we all need uh, for life and for work. Um, since we were last here uh, with you, um, we have a new royal patron. Um, His Royal Hi Highness uh, Prince Edward uh, is now also the Duke of Edinburgh, and he is equally, if not more, passionate about kind of everything the, the award does. Um, and we are really looking forward under his sort of patronship to uh, continue um, doing as much as we can to make sure that these kinds of opportunities are available to everybody. Um, we've had another year of record-breaking award participation. Um, over 330,000 young people started a DAV award uh, last year. And uh, you know, we are continuing to strive to make sure that we can reach as many young people as possible. Um, and thanks to funding from uh, uh, government, um, and I'm delighted that Secretary of State is here uh, tonight to sort of share this celebration. Um, we have uh, begun offering the award in 455 state schools that haven't previously delivered it. So we are doing a phenomenal kind of job at kind of extending the award um, making sure um, that everybody has access uh, to these kind of life-changing opportunities. Um, we're delighted that we're partnering with government around the National Youth Guarantee. It's really, uh, we've had sort of a few days uh, here talking all about, you know, how we can bring um, government departments together, how we can really invest and bring together all of the passion and enthusiasm there is for supporting young people, particularly given um, the, the fairly sort of uh, tumultuous time that um, they have had over the past few years. Um, and it's been really encouraging to see, you know, how, um, how sort of enthusiastic, I think, uh, government is around wanting to support young people. And uh, the Secretary of State made a number of new announcements last week, all of which were designed to put sort of more support behind making sure all young people can access uh, these kinds of enrichment and development opportunities. Um, we're making great progress, but there is still more to do. Um, we are continuing and determined to continue our efforts to do it, and we're working ac across the youth sector with partners and government to try and make that a reality. So thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you for being such strong supporters of young people. Um, we really appreciate it, and uh, yeah, look forward to working with you all to take, uh, go to even greater heights. Thank you very much, Ruth. And uh, the, the next speaker probably needs no introduction, but 
uh, I think would would possibly challenge Ruth on who has the the best job in the world uh, as as Secretary of State for Culture, Media, and Sport. Please welcome uh, the Secretary of State. Thank you. Please. Thank you very much, uh, Angus. And you're absolutely right. Um, I'm afraid, Ruth, I do have the best job in the country. But I'm, I'm happy to concede you have the second best job uh, in the country. So, uh, uh, Angus, thank you very much for hosting this event. It's a pleasure to be here. And thank you for the inspirational speeches that we both had from Sara and from Zach. And, Ruth, thank you. It's been a pleasure to talk to you about the importance of enrichment. And thank you for your thoughts and ideas and leading such an important organization that is the Duke of Edinburgh Awards. Um, I, think, I, I think I might be alone in this room because I didn't have the opportunity um, because I'm a little bit older than some of the people here today, to take part in the Duke of Edinburgh Award. And I'm really, really gutted to hear from Ruth that there's a cut-off at 25, because I'm only just past that threshold. <laughs> it's not that funny. <laughs> but as a young person, I did take part in uh, a range of activities that really uh, supported me as a young person and I think has given me a passion uh, to ensure that I do my bit as the Secretary of State to support young people through those opportunities that I had as a young person. So I was actively, in, I was a brownie and I was a guide and I went on camp and I understand the, uh, what happens when it rains outside and your tent's rubbish because you put it up. Uh, and I uh, volunteered in, uh, in my local uh, old age home as part of a youth activity, as part of a youth club that I went to. And I went to a youth club probably from the ages of sort of 12 to 17 uh, uh, very uh, and took a, a huge part in that. And I think that those activities, just like the Duke of Edinburgh Award, um, gave me the skills of resilience and confidence and team building that I think you are giving young people from all backgrounds up and down the country. Um, so I just want to extend my thanks to everything that the Duke of Edinburgh scheme does. And what an amazing job. It's helped six million people. You know, Ruth identified 300,000 working through their awards uh, this year. And the volunteering aspect uh, has uh, generated a value of 17 million pounds. That's alone, you know, leaving aside the, the value to the young people uh, and the value to the economy that's coming through as they build their self-confidence. And as Ruth touched on, you know, what more important time than to help young people than as we're coming out of the pandemic and the wellness and well-being issues that young people are facing having been um, uh, not able to socialise and take part in all those skills. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm the Secretary of State for Culture, Media and Sport. I did joke with um, my special advisors recently that I would like to expand the title to Culture, Media, Sport and Youth. Uh, because youth is a really important part of uh, my job as Secretary of State. Uh, and I'm really, really proud to be able to enhance the opportunities that we through DCMS ha can give to young people. And I was so pleased to be able to announce last week a package of measures will, that will support people um, as they grow up. So I think every young person should have someone to talk to, somewhere to go and something to do. And luckily, lots of people have someone to talk to, like their parents or their aunt or their friends or their teacher, but some people don't. And so I want to make sure that people who don't have access to a youth worker or a mentor, and I was really proud that we announced last week, access to 5,000 more mentors for young people. And we've announced uh, in something to do more adventures away from home, 7,500 people will get more adventures away from home. Uh, and uh, somewhere to go, they will also have more access to youth clubs with our Million Hours Fund. And the Duke of Edinburgh is giving them so many opportunities in, in all those spaces, because I'm sure on your programs, you know, people are making links with people who can support them, uh, and you're giving, you're absolutely giving them something to do. Uh, and it was great to hear how much Zach had taken from the scheme. Uh, and it, this is all about people. It's about people like Zach. I met someone uh, 
called Shamsa recently. She was on a different scheme, which was the National Citizen Service Scheme. You know, she came to this country knowing no English. She went through one of those programs and I was really pleased uh, that she told me recently she, she came to this country, she wanted to be a police apprentice. She didn't even speak the language and she told me last week that she's now on her police apprentice course. And that's what these programs do. They give people skills, opportunities, confidence to make their way in life. And what Sarah said about the scheme enriching and empowering people, I think is absolutely right. So I just want to end by saying thank you for everyone who has a part in this organization. You know, you are changing lives and thank you uh, for continuing to make a difference. Thank you. Secretary of State, thank you very much. I know you have to shoot off to another event, but thank you for, for giving so generously of your time. Thank you again to all of you who've joined us here, to those watching the speeches on the live stream. Please do enjoy the rest of the refreshments at the back there and have a very good final evening at conference. Thank you. Thank you.